Hey, Dr. Wood coming at you again, uh, author of Miracles of Minutes. Uh, yesterday we covered the observer, and today we're going to revisit that subject matter, so we'll call this video Observer Part 2. Um, yesterday we talked about the three different brains. Uh, today we'll cover a little bit about that, particularly the um, snake brain or crocodile brain. So we all, what, what clouds are thinking is emotion. When we have heavy emotions, anxiety, we get the deer in the headlights. We freeze or we get into a fight or flight response. Um, so our brain shuts down. The smartest part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, is no longer active and we're in a survival mode. So <clears throat> what we want to create now is a distinction. And the distinction is when you're feeling something, an emotion, the distinction is there is a you, the real you, that is experiencing that. When you, we also have a dialogue going in our head all the time. What's going on? I don't know if I like that person. I like this person. I don't like this person. That voice isn't you either. There's the real you who's listening to that. And that distinction can clean off a lot of the crap that's going on in our brains. So what you think is not really you. And what you feel is not really you. At that point, the real you can choose to listen to it or choose not to. You don't want to deny your feelings. You know, if you're having anxiety, you don't try to act like you're not having it because that's a cover-up strategy. You use a lot of energy to do that. You're pretending something that's not happening. You're like kind of like denying part of yourself. That doesn't work. But you do, you can label it. And labeling it, you can contain the emotion. So if you're having anxiety, you go, huh, I'm having anxiety. Accept it. If you can accept it, it goes down. If you try to resist it, the sensation is going to go up. So you call it what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, I'm nervous. Okay, great. Now what you're going to do is create the distinction that, huh, there's a part of me that recognizes that I'm feeling this sensation. Now what we're going to do is, instead of that emotion coming into our brain and flooding our, our being and we have a panic attack or a nervous breakdown or whatever or try to pretend it's not happening under the surface is bring our awareness to our breathing. Uh, this is covered in many books. Here's two great books I recommend to you. One is Unbeatable Mind by Mark Devine. He's the creator of Seal Fit. He's a Seal Commander and he in his Seal Fit uh, training class he uh, says the guys who go through that have an 85% chance of passing BUDS training, which is the SEAL thing, where they start with 119 people and only 19 make it through there, through BUDS training. And then it's not ever a physical thing, it's always a mental thing. People break down mentally. Um, the, another great book is Just Listen by Dr. Mark Golston. Golston um, was a um, suicide prevention therapist and also a hostage ne negotiator. So his book puts in some great points, covers the crocodile brain and these different levels of, of emotion, uh, particularly when the alarms go off. Uh, but if you think about it, the person who's about to commit suicide is on the ledge of ending their life. And the person in a hostage negotiation has a gun to someone's head about to end someone else's life. The person's on the ledge. How to talk to that person and talk them down off the ledge is a skill that I think we all should work on, whether it's with ourselves or for other people, to help people find themselves and come to common sense. So <clears throat> one of the tools you can do is box breathing, as espoused by uh, Mark Devine in his book, Unbeatable Mind. So box breathing is you want to breathe in through your nostrils. When you breathe in through your nose, it tells your brain to use your diaphragm. If you mouth breathe, <sighs> it's already a stress response. Your brain thinks you're in more of a panic state, so breathing through the nose. You're going to breathe in for five seconds, hold for five seconds, and then exhale for five seconds. That's what Divine espouses. There's some other stuff out there that I'll cover in a later video um, in regards to polyvagal theory and some other things. Uh, but that's one thing to help you calm down. In my book, Miracles and Minutes, I talk about something called Qigong breathing, which is a China, it's 4,000 years old. It's Qi is energy, Gong means discipline, but it's also very much predicated upon breathing and improving your breathing. Breathing is our first e exercise, inhale, and our last ex exercise in life, exhale. So that's part of life is if you stop breathing, 
life's over. So as you breathe slower and deeper and more relaxed, your brain calms down, emotions calm down. So even if your emotions run high really fast, which is very helpful in situations, call it what it is, it's anxiety, I'm feeling sad or depressed, bring the breathing down, and then you could do what I told you to the, um, in the other video of the first observer, which is think about a time when uh, at a beach or a place when you're very calm and relaxed and start breathing like that. That allow the mind to calm down. So the emotions were high, you now got them down, now there's space in between and now you can respond. Now you want to come back and rethink about something. It's also a way to regain your composure when life throws that moment at you when your alarms go off in your head, something happens, there's a car accident, um, you get bad news, but the thing is you can't get caught in the emotions, you gotta get back in the game of life, and one of the ways to do that is to, huh, I'm feeling this emotion, label it, bring, that now, now there's the you, who's the real you, who can call it and say, huh, that's an emotion, that doesn't have to be me, because you can choose your emotions. Bring your focus back to your breathing. Box breathe. And these are skills that you're going to have to practice. This is not like I'm telling you to do this in the video. You're going to need to practice this. First, practice the breathing. And then the universe or life is going to give you the real world experience of something's going to happen. Your emotion is going to go high. You're going to need to calm down. And the quicker you can do that to get back in the game of life, that they would they would call that poise or grace. That's what's really respect in professional sports. Things happen. The player has to keep his head in the game and be able to perform. And we need to be able to do that to be effective for ourselves, our patients, and to perform well in their job. So this is part two of the observer covering um, the distinction between there's you over here, the motion over there. Experience the emotion. Just you know feel it. But if you can label it and call it something, you can contain it by putting a label on it. Focus the breathing. Think about a time when you were very comfortable and relaxed. And then once you're relaxed, come back and relook at the situation and, and tell yourself that was just an event. And pat yourself on the back for a quick recovery. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.